update from, uh, from Canberra. So uh, firstly, uh, the numbers, we now have 28,504 total cases uh, in Australia since the beginning of the pandemic. That means 21 newly confirmed cases in the last 24 hours. Um, very pleasingly, we know that there are uh, outbreaks both in Sydney and in Melbourne, um, but very few cases were diagnosed uh, up till the cutoff for, for today's numbers uh, last night. So, in fact, zero cases for the 24 hours to, to 8 p.m. in New South Wales yesterday, uh, and only three cases in Victoria. So, uh, that that is really just a, a, an incredibly uh, important message that whilst we are concerned with these with these locally acquired cases of course we are um, the contact tracing uh, exercise um, the testing uh, and the isolation efforts that are being done in both Victoria and New South Wales are bearing fruit um, of course there have been other elements of our what we call our, our, our suppression strategy that have been put into play over the last uh, 24 hours and before that in relation to both of those states uh, which are also contributing uh, to the control of the, of the coronavirus in those, uh, in those places. Um, uh, just to, uh, to, to think about uh, other elements of this, so we have uh, now a, a number of active cases as well in hotel quarantine. Th those numbers uh, in people coming from overseas uh, are starting to increase slowly. There's still a small proportion of the people that are coming across our border, um, but that hotel quarantine component of our control strategy remains crucial and important uh, and is uh, uh, and, and that 14 days is absolutely required uh, and is happening in the states which are taking um, uh, arrivals from overseas right now. Um, in terms of hospitalisations, we only have 26 people in hospital right throughout Australia. That's hugely different. Um, from almost every other country in the world right now where uh, we are seeing major um, problems and issues in relation to hospitalisations, particularly in the US, but uh, in many other countries. Um, we have zero people in intensive care and no one, of course, therefore on ventilation. Um, so that is, a, a, again, a, a major difference between us and the rest of the world. Um, there's been a lot of uh, discussion, as there should be, around the vaccination uh, uh, pr uh, uh, policy and strategy here in Australia uh, compared with other countries. Uh, I just want to reassure, as we've been saying for, for some time now, that we are going through the processes as we've talked about for some time in relation to getting vaccination to Australians. Uh, and that is on target. Uh, and we are uh, going through all of the processes that need to, need to be done to ensure safety as well as a, uh, a, a strong and uh, efficient uh, implementation of, of that strategy. Um, so the next steps as we're going through, we, uh, in fact, I met with our, our, our newly formed division of the, of the, of, for vaccination, uh, COVID vaccination here in the Department of Health in Canberra today. Um, uh, they, they have been working um, virtually nonstop all the way through uh, from before Christmas and through Christmas and New Year's period and, and now back on deck uh, totally today and, and, and focused on what needs to be done uh, in relation to that. Similarly, our independent regulator, the, the Therapeutic Goods Administration, has continued to have very close and frequent contact with, with overseas regulators, some of whom have, uh, have now uh, given a, an emergency use authority for, for a couple of the vaccines and another one overnight in, in India. Um, so uh, so we're, we are, have the finger on the pulse there. We know, firstly, the, what, what's happening in the regulatory space, but also, as, as importantly, what's happening in terms of implementation of those vaccine strategies in like-minded countries like the UK, like the US and other parts of Europe. Um, so that, that's going ahead. The approvals will happen when all of the information that we need to make those approvals uh, is available, uh, and that will be uh, fast-tracked as much as possible, but no... Um, shortcuts will be made. Um, the safety tick has to be there before anyone gets this vaccine in Australia. Um, once that approval is done, there will, uh, there will be deliveries from uh, our overseas suppliers uh, and then from our, locally, uh, our local uh, suppliers here in Australia, the AstraZeneca vaccine, if and when that gets the approval. Um, and so uh, after, after those uh, suppliers are in Australia, there will be uh, extra testing that's done in terms of the absolute final tick for safety uh, and that takes a, a short period and then we'll then we'll be starting uh, so we've said all along that uh, by by the end of March we will have 
uh, vaccines here in Australia. If it ends up being some of those things being a bit earlier, well, that's great, but we're not going to promise any, any sort of anything there. We need to get through all of those processes that, uh, that need to happen. Finally, I just want to make a reminder to those of you that are living um, in, in the Sydney, Greater Sydney area, including Wollongong and the Central Coast, masks are now mandated in indoor settings. Uh, so please take on uh, that, that approach, as, is, as has happened in Victoria over many months, um, as, as part of, but not the only, but part of our protection uh, against this virus spreading, uh, to protect yourself, to protect your family, and to protect the wider community. So masks is part of that message uh, in those areas where there is community transmission. Um, but all those other messages we've been using since the beginning about washing your hands, coughing and, uh, or sneezing safely, um, uh, keeping your distance of 1.5 metres, um, minimising, um, all of those things will help right now, particularly in those areas where there may be circulating virus. And of course, if you are sick, please do not go to work. Please do not go outside your house get tested uh, and that is a way we will firstly find where where there is spread, if there is further spread in those areas uh, and again uh, protect you and your family and the wider community. Uh, those testing rates do need to come up um, in, in Sydney and in Melbourne uh, and I know that both, uh, both the uh, New South Wales Health and, and Victorian DHHS are working to increase and improve uh, that, those testing sites and availability. Uh, from the Commonwealth perspective, we've also uh, increased our, our hours and support through our GP respiratory clinics. There's 149 of those all around the country. Uh, for those uh, states that require it, we have, we have increased uh, the ability for asymptomatic testing in those, in those sites, and so uh, the Commonwealth is, is assisting. Uh, we had another AHPPC meeting today. Um, we're meeting daily. Uh, and uh, all of the Chief Health Officers and others, other experts on that committee are providing their insights and uh, assistance to, particularly to New South Wales and to Victoria at this time. Uh, happy to take questions. Professor Kelly, it's been a confusing weekend on the borders. Is it concerning to you that the common definition of a hotspot seems to be chucked out the window? And were the borders discussed at the APAC meeting today? Um, so, so the borders uh, were, were discussed. I, I did want to find out if there were going to be any changes there so that we can uh, discuss those. But look, ultimately the uh, domestic border closures are a matter for the states and they've, uh, they're doing what they feel is necessary to protect their own populations within their own states. And so, uh, so that's that. We, we do have a hotspot definition from the Commonwealth that was, that was mostly designed and was agreed actually at AHPPC and at National Cabinet uh, to guide Commonwealth support to um, state public health responses, uh, for example, in relation to aged care and so forth. Um, so that's there for that reason. Uh, I, I am uh, very uh, happy to, to see how the, the NT, Tasmania, um, uh, and some of the other um, uh, states are, are using their own sort of version of a hotspot, um, hotspot definition in relation to their border um, decisions. Uh, but the other states, as I say, they, they have to make the decisions uh, as they see fit to protect their own population. Given how quickly situations can change, do you, do you believe that we should be you know, have going on these great summer holidays before the, the, the vaccine comes into wide circulation, given how you know, quickly it can, can be all taken away from us? So, yeah, so we all, always knew that uh, from the beginning of this uh, that a respiratory virus um, does generally spread with people and so where people are more mobile uh, and gathering uh, together then that is the way that viruses spread. So we know that's that's the typical way that, that, that things happen during summer in Australia, uh, Christmas gatherings and so forth uh, as, as is playing out in the Victorian outbreak related to that uh, Blackrock um, restaurant. Uh, most of the second secondary cases have been uh, in Christmas gatherings, people coming together uh, in their own homes and so that's why we, uh, uh, we and also uh, Victorian and the uh, uh, New South Wales uh, health authorities in particular have been making that, those, uh, those pleas about, about uh, gatherings uh, in private homes as well as uh, other venues uh, and, and indeed making uh, adjustments to the public health orders in relation to that. Um, so it's a risk. Uh, we do need to start learning at some point to live with this virus, but uh, the vaccine's coming and I think people being very cautionary and precautionary today uh, and into the coming months, 
whilst we're waiting for that vaccine is definitely the way to go. Are we likely um, to get a fresh wave of cases um, once people start returning to their homes after this, this holiday period? Um, so, so we we know where the where the um, the hot spots are in in, in Sydney um, and uh, and this one particular venue in particular in uh, in uh, Melbourne. Um, uh, and so, as people move around, yes, that that is a, is an issue, and that's why I'm sure the Victorian authorities have requested anyone coming from New South Wales should get a test, um, and uh, and the same for Victorians going into into different uh, into other jurisdictions. And so, so again, I call out to anyone who has been uh, at those places of interest in either New South Wales or Victoria, and they are updated very regularly and with great. Um, detail uh, and uh, pinpointing times as well as place um, on the websites of those two uh, authorities and I would really request anyone who's been in New South Wales in the last couple of weeks to be checking that regularly and similarly for those of you in Victoria. I'll just go to the phone, I think Paul's Paul from the AAP is on the phone. Uh, yes I am, can you hear me okay? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Um, if the TTA does approve a vaccine or, or, or the three vaccines in January, why is it that it can't roll them out until late March? How can you explain that to the public, that, that long, long tail? So I can, I can absolutely assure the public there will be no delays uh, once, once that approval is done. And that's, that's, the, that's the rate limiting step in a, in a sense is that uh, that approval has to be done. After the approval, there needs to be uh, stock available to be distributed, uh, and then some of that stock needs to be, have further testing from the TGA after that approval. Um, so there is some times there. It will be explained uh, later on in the week. We'll be making uh, more announcements about that timing and that, that process. Um, but, uh, and and we're, we're just being cautious in terms of the, the late March timeline at this stage, hoping that, hoping that it may be shorter than that but at this stage we're being we're being um, upfront uh, that that is our our plan for uh, the end of March to be our, our time when we started but just to, to absolutely assure you and the, the Australian public there will be no delays other than those that are absolutely necessary for safety and to ensure that the implementation uh, of the vaccine strategy uh, is working to its most efficient uh, way to get vaccines to all Australians that want one uh, by the end of the year. Um, um, just sure. if, I, if I may on, a, yeah. on another issue, the, uh, the test cricket, um, obviously that's going ahead with about 20,000 people. Are you comfortable with that and, and, and what, what, do you, what, what assurances have you been seeking from the uh, New South Wales government? So ultimately um, the decision about a major event like the, the, the Sydney Cricket Test um, uh, sits with the, with the government uh, of the jurisdiction, so the New South Wales government in this case, uh, together with the organising uh, group, in this case Cricket Australia, and the venue, which is the SCG and the SCG Trust. Um, so I, I, I know and I've, I've had um, several discussions with Dr Kerry Chant uh, about these matters, the Chief Health Officer in, in uh, New South Wales in recent days, uh, about the cricket. I've been to the cricket many times at the SCG and so uh, I shared my, my uh, insights into how that, the, that sort of event works. Uh, so she's taken that on board. I understand that uh, some of her staff went to, uh, have gone through all of the COVID safe plans and they are extensive in the SCG um, uh, about how they'll run, run this event. Uh, ultimately, I think uh, there is a, a couple of things that need to be addressed, and I'm, I'm confident they are addressing them. Firstly, um, uh, what, what are those COVID-safe plans, not only within uh, the venue, but also on, on entry and exit from the venue and uh, the public transport and the like of people coming to the venue? Um, uh, at w what happens? Uh, and and uh, the second point, of course, is what's happening in the epidemiology of this virus in the Sydney region. So. Um, uh, so I, I know that both of those things are, are taking place right now and uh, that will be a decision will be made, I'm sure, in, in coming days. Um, so I think it's just, just literally just been announced. I think they were going to cut it to 10,000. Uh, so it has been announced, yes. I was aware whether that was coming yep. up. I think the SCG was uh, uh, about to um, talk that through. Um, so uh, Josh from the New Daily. Yeah, thank you, Professor. Um, just another one on vaccine.
teams. I think probably to follow up the previous question from Paul and sort of touching on your answer about stock supply being a factor, can we physically get our hands on these initial doses, um, the ones in the March rollout before March? Because these are the ones that are getting sent from overseas, if I, if I know correctly. Is there a delivery date set in stone for those physical doses or can it actually be earlier if pending TGA approval and pending all these the things that we need to do? So, uh, so as you know, there there are there are three uh, vaccines that we now have uh, vaccine companies that we now have advanced purchase approval uh, with this the Pfizer and Biotech vaccine, which uh, which has been rolled out in multiple countries under under the emergency use authorization scheme. Um, there's the Oxford uh, AstraZeneca vaccine, uh, and then there is also Novavax, which is a, a protein vaccine which won't be available until later in the year when they've completed all their trials. But we have that pre-purchased. Um, so to the, to the um, uh, Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine, first of all, um, this is the one that requires minus 70 um, uh, freezer space um, to, to keep it uh, uh, stable before it's used for vaccination. Um, so the idea for that would be to get it just before it's used because um, the risks of, of it, uh, uh, the logistic issues um, uh, would, would uh, point towards that direction. Uh, that will be coming from overseas. We don't make that particular vaccine or that type of vaccine here in Australia. Uh, and so once approval is, uh, comes through, we, we have had multiple discussions with that company to make sure that there is no delay in getting that vaccine to Australia so we can complete those last batch testing um, uh, component of the safety, con of the safety checks uh, and then it will be ready to roll out. In terms of AstraZeneca, um, that is that is being made here in uh, in Melbourne, um, and uh, and we are working with CSL to make sure that those, those batches of Australian-made AstraZeneca vaccine, uh, again, uh, there is no uh, significant delay after approval for that one. Um, but before that arrives, we have a we have negotiated with the company to have overseas-made um, uh, vaccine of the same type. Um, delivered here and again it would be the same thing once approval is here um, then we, we will be getting those vaccines delivered to Australia. I guess just to, just to press you on that if, if, if we do get it approved say in January, February before that, that March timetable can we ring up AstraZeneca, can we ring up Pfizer and say we're ready for it now send it over or are those dates sort of locked in stone, immovable, not able to be changed? So, so we're, we're in constant, uh, constant uh, discussions, not negotiations, but discussions with those two, two companies. Ultimately, it's a decision for the company, um, but we, uh, we have um, our contracts in place about delivery schedules in the, the first quarter of this year, and, uh, and we'll, be, we'll be binding them to that. Um, any more questions from the room? Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Professor, mm -hmm. I've, just, I've just been asked to ask this one. Is, is there any risk in allowing Victorians that have been in New South Wales to return home provided they isolate for 14 days? Um, in Victoria? Mm -hmm. So it's Victorians going back to Victorians New South Wales? Can, Victorians coming, going home from New South Wales. Yeah, so, so that's, that's a matter for New South Wales to decide what should happen to, to people coming within their state. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not aware of any restriction for Victorians coming back at this point. You mentioned earlier that the testing rates need to come up in Sydney and Melbourne. What's the ideal level of testing rates we should be seeing? I think as many as possible. Um, so so we, we, we reached um, a, a phenomenal high just before Christmas of 68,000 tests. Almost all of those were in, were in Sydney. Um, a, a large proportion of those were in the Northern Beaches where at that time uh, that's where the, the cluster of cases was occurring. So, so in fact in the northern part of the Northern Beaches uh, almost 43% of the of the population had a test in one week. Um, that's feasible and, and achievable. We've we've seen that um, at least in that small sort of population uh, area. Um, the, the the anyone who has been asked to get a test by the local authorities should should attempt to do that as quickly as possible. Anyone who has symptoms right now, particularly in Victoria and New South Wales, but this is the same right throughout Australia. Uh, or if you have come from either of those states in recent times, if you are sick, get a test. Um, so I think as many people as possible, we, we will continue to work with, with the local authorities to increase the ability for people to get tests uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, but I am, I am very uh, pleased with the way that the, the, the laboratory tests themselves, the laboratories have been keeping up with that demand. 
Um, so people are getting the results within a day and so that's very important so we can guide not only the public health response uh, but particularly what those individuals should be doing. Uh, okay, thanks very much guys.